Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to Apostolic Children's Ministry Podcast. I have with me my good friend, Brother Bob Lee, and we are recording on a Friday, a little bit different in the week, but I think that's just the start of the different things that we're going to be doing on this podcast. Uh, I think we're going to change the format a little bit. Change the things up a bit. Maybe the topics, um, instead of just doing a recap every week, I think we're going to be a little more topical, you know, find a, a topic and kind of hash it out. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Maybe this is a one-time thing and everybody hates it and we'll go back to <laughs> what we used to do. <laughs> Feedback is a gift. That's right. So that leading to that, uh, please tell us. We have to know. Otherwise, we won't uh, have any sense of direction. If you could email us at info at apostolicsundayschool.com. Just take a few seconds and help us uh, figure out what is most effective and most beneficial to everybody out there. We have been doing like recaps of our Sunday school, both of our bus ministry Sunday school, just kind of hitting on everything that has happened. And uh, while it's interesting for some, it may not be for others. So we want to make sure that we're reaching, uh, I guess, given the most uh, bang for the buck. <laughs> as it were. Sounds good. It's exciting. Brother Lee, thank you for coming from work, straight from work and, and doing this. Oh, I, I'm happy to be here. I, I, uh, I promise I'm going to be good and, and, and not say anything crazy and, and outlandish, but I do, I, do have, I do have an excuse. Oh, uh, yes. I, I'm trying to remember what you're referring to. I'm, just just I, saying I don't something it. just it maybe questionably something we should edit possibly because this oh, is wrong. That's, that's <laughs> I'm, true. But I have an excuse. Now, six, uh, 20 something years ago, uh, you might remember uh, Elder Von Morton um, had just turned 60, you know, and he said, You know what? I'm so excited that I'm 60 now because I can get up here and say anything I want, and people <laughs> will just say, Oh, he's just an old guy, and it just don't bother what he says. And so I'm at that age now, Philip. I'm 62. Based on everything you've said about <laughs> me, Brother Lee, I think that might be my excuse, too. <laughs> but what I don't understand is you keep inviting me back, <laughs> but your brother, <laughs> If you notice, he's cut me off from the pulpit. I don't do any announcements oh, anymore. Oh, my so word. Anyway, he's, he must be so smarter than you. I don't know. But well, there's anyway, no question he's I'm excited to be here, but I promise to be good. And I, I do try to want to hold a thought together. I notice that I ramble on and go. You do not my, ramble. I do, too. My mind just goes a hundred different directions, and I just, I'm thinking about three things down the road, and, and I never finish a thought. So is, I want to try to today. I think that's a, a, a good uh like a necessary characteristic of all Sunday school teachers, you you have to be a little bit ADD. To you know what? Thing. I think maybe we'll talk about that when we get into that. But I it, it might help because you you definitely um, ADD ADHD. I don't know you know, some I, I, of those you know, alphabet. I, I think in helping in some of our growing, and we'll maybe talk about that. Uh, some of the newer people is you know. Um, I think being flexible and and quick on your feet, you you have to be because you just don't know. It's like, well, what did you say? Uh, like talking to a room full of drunks or something like that, whatever the story is. Yeah, yeah. But you just never kids, know what you're getting. Every day, every, room full every, of every drunk Sunday people. is different. But sometimes we get in a flow where it's like pretty consistent, and uh, it's been good. It's been a lot of fun, so it's exciting. Uh, absolutely, anyway. I, I do enjoy when you're on the podcast. <laughs> okay. uh, but to to help everybody that is just listening to his statement about a room full of drunk people. Let me just give you a little <laughs> bit of context. There's a book and it's by this guy. I actually have his book up here. This one right here, David K. And he, he is, his stage name is silly Billy. He does uh, kids magician uh, shows. And he was trying to describe to one of his friends, the difference between like an adult doing a, a show for adults and a show for kids. He said, well, just imagine that your entire audience is drunk. He said, that's my, <laughs> children's audience because they're completely unpredictable and could do anything at any time. So that's what Bob was referring to. Yep. Uh, so whenever you're, uh, someone challenges whether or not, uh, you know, it's easy teaching Sunday school, just tell them next, next time you try teaching, imagine if everybody there was yep. drunk. Yep. So we are going to do a little bit uh, different type of podcast, but I do want to touch on some things that have been happening here at in the lighthouse, uh, some exciting stuff. We just had our big children's revival. That was exciting. We have that every year, our annual uh, time where we put Sunday school in front of the church. We go in, on the big, in the big sanctuary, set up on the stage, do a, a weekend takeover, as it were, kind of pull out all the stops for the props and decorations, and uh, just have church, just have Sunday school. 
and uh, man, what a great what a great weekend! It was it was a lot of fun, and we thank Brother Hodge for coming down and helping with it, and and yeah, it was a very exciting. It's, I look forward to that every year. It gets seems like it gets better and better. I don't know. It's it's fun. I, I have a good time. So as well. In fact, I was just going to say something to, along those lines. Is every year we we do spare no no uh, energy or expense. I, I guess we spare some expense on on the decor. And every year it feels like the decorations get better. Yeah. And I remember last year thinking this specifically, this is the best year. I, it was just, it was phenomenal. The underwater theme. And I'm just yeah, like, yeah. this is the best uh, props we've ever done. Mm-hmm. But this year I feel the same way. Yeah. <laughs> I feel yeah. like we did it again. And I don't know how it keeps happening, but it does. It really did feel like it was just a knock it, knock out. We had our castle. Yeah. Go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, I don't know. I, I'm sure if they follow, if anybody follows, but maybe you should uh, let them know Instagram pictures or something like that. But you know what we should do is go back through the archives and do a progression theme from like 2019 or when, when did we first do? We did the science thing or something. I, I can't remember. The we first did different one things. Was a long but just kind of just put some pictures together, just kind of through the years. I think it'd be kind of neat to look at the different uh, things oh, we that had. That would be really cool. It'd be fun to kind of see. Help some, me not some, forget yeah, that. Yeah, I think we'll that'd be that. neat. So I think we our very first one in its infancy was back in 2015, probably. Yeah. When yeah. we did just the the science theme. It was a lot of it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was. Uh, we probably won't be able to capture some of the moments, but it was it was a I good do, time. I do. I still have pictures. <laughs> yeah. I remember seeing those, and then we, like you said, we've scaled through the years. But uh, we had our our giant castle. But strangely enough, yeah. the castle, if you've ever been to Summit or to the SEC conference where we had uh, the castle as front and center, it wasn't the centerpiece of the stage as it was at the SEC conference. We moved it off to the side, so. Yes, of course, the kingdom's what this thing's all about. But we had to have a second part of the stage for our our uh, forest yeah. scene because we kind of did a Pilgrim's Progress style story mm-hmm. where Sarah was the traveler and she's trying to get into the kingdom. And if the <laughs> castle had been center stage, there would have been a whole yeah, lot of yeah. room to maneuver. So <laughs> it was a, it was a good really storyline. I think it came out well. She kept going up meeting people who some would try to help, some would try to distract. Um, there was a gate that kept her from, out of the kingdom, and it had locks on it, and the, there was a plan of salvation that they had to. Uh, she had to work her way through one at a time from belief to baptism, and, uh, excuse me, repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And they, each time she'd take a lock off, and then she finally got inside. It was just a, it was a neat, neat moment. Yeah, it was good. So that was Saturday night. We had uh, two, three, three kids get the Holy Ghost that night and to get baptized. And then the next day was our uh, Sunday morning with Brother Hodge. So he led most of the activities and the way the service went. And uh, we helped a little bit. We did some preliminaries. But he did a fabulous job and we had two more get the Holy Ghost. That's exciting. And two more baptized, I believe. Yeah, One more? Yeah. One more yeah. baptized? I, think am I, I am not thinking yeah. very clear. I thought it was four and five, but I can't remember. Anyway, total of five, get the Holy Ghost, four, four be baptized, I'm pretty sure. But it was a great, great Sunday. Uh, and then we transitioned all of that props, at least the castle part, into our main Sunday school for our Sunday to Sunday uh, decor. And we are still working on it a little bit, but I think the transition... Looks good. Uh, yeah, it worked well. Um, uh, speaking of... So that transition can be a little abrupt, you know, for the kids. Like they left last time and it was growing in God and it was a farm or, you know, I think it was a farm garden, you know, whatever. And we had Farmer Phil and uh, who, who were you last time uh, in the farm? As a farmer thing? I, I was uh, Barnyard Bob. That's or right. Like that, I think. That's right. Barnyard Bob. <laughs> Uh, so we had a storyline around that. Well, when we went to the to the kingdom, I didn't want it to just to be a hard show up in the kingdom and we pretend the garden never happened thing. Mm-hmm. My daughter is blowing me up. Uh, anyway, she... Ah, I'm so sorry. My brain just turned completely off. Where, where were we at? Transition from the farm growing to the castle. Yes. So Farmer Phil shows up at the castle. He bonks his head because he's plowing and uh, falls off his horse. If she calls me again, I'm going to throw this phone out the window. I uh, love you, Tristan. Uh, and uh, he bonks his head, wakes up in the castle. Somehow he times travels, kind of like the Connecticut Yankee and King Arthur's Court, Mark Twain story, where he does that and transitions to the knights. Have you ever read that story, by the way? I don't think 
So, so Mark Twain, it's a story of like a, a modern guy that, that does something like that, mm-hmm. bonks his head and shows up, ends up in the night times, mm-hmm. uh, medieval times. So that's exactly what happened with me. Yeah. Uh, so I wake up, Danny, Sir Oliver's there welcoming me to the castle. I have no clue how I'm there. And I learn all Sunday long about how the castle operates. So mm-hmm. it's pretty Pretty cool. Uh, decent way of, of introducing the new thing. Yep. And this Sunday, I'm going to be, uh, you you were the king, so yep. I don't know if you know this yet, but you're going to invite me as part of the kingdom. Not a knight yet. I was thinking I was going to be okay. a knight this week, but I think I need to work my way into it. i got to earn my stripes. So, you're, so. so your head is still bonked. You're, you're still in the kingdom time frame? Correct. I'll okay. stay bonked, and I'll probably okay. stay bonked until the end of the okay. All right. <laughs> of All the right. decor. So it's going to be that tether right there. Yeah, and I'll just okay. be part of the kingdom. I'll okay. just start uh, acclimating. But I think I'm just going to be a peasant or a squire or something, okay. and then uh, gradually become a knight by the end of the story. So Okay, good. Yeah. That's fine. Anyway, uh, so we have another big project that we, our whole last project, excuse me, podcast was about. And that's our new curriculum, our apostolic curriculum that's being written by a great team of people from all across the United States. And we put out a poll. I don't know. Did you get that, by the way, the, the email I sent the, out? The jot form? Thing? Yes. Yes, I did. I did respond. So we sent out a, a request for input on how to make this curriculum that we're writing the best it can possibly be. Everything from what do you like about your current curriculum to what you like least, what would be the perfect curriculum how long your classes last, how many kids are average in your class. We're just trying to get a feel of who we're writing this thing for. And if all of this is great and you really like it, would you actually use it? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, if there's only one person out of 170 that say, yeah, we'd like to do it, we're probably you know, going to be a little less excited <laughs> about writing it. But, man, we had a flood of input. We had over 170 responses. Good, good. I don't know how many churches that represents yet, uh, but... Most of them are from different churches, so we have a lot of good input, and that's both good and challenging, as you know, Brother Lee. Mm -hmm. When you have that many input, you're not going to please everybody. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) We're going to do the best we can and and take as much of this feedback and and you know funnel it into this curriculum. But there's there's going to be conflicts. Well, you know, uh, at work, um, you know, there's I don't know if you've if anybody out there has done any kind of like project management stuff, there's um, my last company. They were really big on um, on like doing like agile type of project project management, um, where the, the goal is to, is to let's just get something out there that's uh, like a minimum viable product, something that people can use, and then instead of waiting two years till something. The big let's just get something out there that works and then you build off of that so maybe this will be something kind of like that where hey you take what something get it out there to help people and then just kind of add to it or something like that uh, you have just like any book you have an edition yeah. one two version or whatever and um, we'll see where yeah. it goes no that makes absolute sense now we are going to be careful about not careful we're going to we're going to try to put our best foot forward because some people if it's not at least yeah, yeah, pretty good when they see it at first. They're going to say, I'll never give it another chance. Mm-hmm. So we're going to put the best product out there we can, but we're trying to get it out by September as well. So we're trying to get at least the first year out by September. Whether or not that's in people's hands for use, it might even be as a beta test, like to a couple of churches, hey, try this for a month and give us some feedback yeah, sort of yeah. thing. Um, but I like what you said because in the limited stuff I've done, Brother Lee, I'm so bad about if I don't feel like this is the perfect end end product, Mm -hmm. I'll just sit on it and not do anything with it, which is, which is so dingy and self-defeating. I mean, you don't have anything to show instead of, like you said, putting out a product and then having people give you feedback and making it better. Yeah. It's like, well, I think we, we, I think this is deja vu all over again. I think we talked about that on the podcast or, or something, and even some of our videos when COVID started, putting something out there, get something out there, and uh, and then just you know get some you know whatever, and just and just keep improving and whatever, and uh, at least there's something being put out there all the time. So yeah, so I'm I'm kind of chewing on that a little bit because I remember when COVID first came out, 
<laughs> first came out. Sorry, I'm like you said, my brain's <laughs> doing fifteen things at once. When when COVID first uh, took place and everybody was locked up, and uh, brother Johnny King reached out, and I don't remember how he said it, but it was along the lines of, "You need to do something for the kids." He said, and it needs to be every day. And honestly, if he hadn't said that, none of that would have happened because it was the trigger I needed for, if I'm going to do this every day, I can't agonize about this thing. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you just put stuff out. And once you get that habit of producing, it becomes easier. And after, you know, I think we ended up doing it 70 plus days, that after, man, I don't know, Bob, we, how many did we record on a single day sometimes? 10 plus Did or more bu- yeah <laughs> we'd come and just pound them out yeah um and the idea was that like like you said just just don't agonize about the product do the best you can mm-hmm. but just get some, get something out there yeah man I'm, I'm 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 looking at this screen right now where it's an illustration for a book that probably not probably it was back in 2016 eight years ago i was looking at the date eight years ago i wrote this book that we were going to give to our uh, kids that didn't have much familiarity with church. I was going to give them this book and say, hey, this, read this, and it'll explain what happened to them once they get the Holy Ghost. So they come into class, maybe the first time there. We've had this happen recently even. kid that has zero experience with Pentecost shows up, gets the Holy Ghost, and has no clue what just happened to him or her. I want to give them this book, very easy read with pictures and stuff, and just say, hey, this will kind of walk you through what just took place. It'll talk about repentance and baptism in Jesus' name, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, and and what all that means and how Jesus died for us. All all of that is in a book form. Well, I wrote it in 2016 and never published it because I didn't know how. But I didn't ask anybody, and I didn't get serious about it until just now. So... I don't know. I'm so <laughs> guilty of this. Uh, but you got to do it. You know, it, it reminds me. So I, uh, uh, I'm not even going to tell you uh, what the titles are because um, I don't want to feel like I'm putting in a plug for them. But uh, plug them. This w- is the book w- you w- made. W- it, yeah, Good. yeah. So, so uh, when I got laid off, I guess that's a good and bad thing about getting laid off. You got a lot of time. <laughs> So I was around here a lot more doing videos and whatever. We do, um, but we do miss you a lot but, more uh, lately. <laughs> but somebody had, had, I'd heard something about Amazon publishing. And so I thought, you know what? I want to just try something. So I took some scripts that we use for uh, Brother Toronto's, um, some of the uh, apostolic story time things. And I just converted them into books and, and just and just published them on Amazon. One is just kind of see if I could do it, see what the process was. And I ended up putting five out, you know, in like a matter of like two months, you know, just Again, they're not, they're not great and stuff, but they're out there, and and uh, and a, that's another resource if you want to go get them. But they're kind of just basically in script format, characters. Of what are they? Just, tell them what it was. Them what uh, How do they so if, if you search, I guess if you do, um, uh, let's see, one series is called the the Jesus Chronicles. If you type Robert Lee, um, Jesus Chronicles, it should come up, and then the other one, Robert Lee. The other one was um, uh, Bible what do we call it? Imagine the Bible series or something. So Jesus Chronicles and imagine the Bible series. And again, they're just, just something I put out there just like, no, let's just try it. You know, and I don't plan on retiring from it. Uh, I hope I don't get fired and have to live off the royalties. Um, but, uh, (laughs) anyway, it was fun, but Hey, I think it's Philip do it. I just looking at your pictures on the book here. Um, yeah, just keep moving to to chip away and get it done and get it out there. It'll be, it'll be really, what's really funny is I put out, many years ago, that first book of object lessons that we did. Mm-hmm. And then I did a volume two and I plan on a volume three, you know, just keep putting these out every time we get a, a chunk of them done. Well, it's always been something that we just print here on our copier and comb bind them and send them off. Right. Well, I was talking to Danny who just did a kid's book as well about the same thing you did, the Amazon self-publishing. And I thought, you know what? This is so ridiculous. Why am I just so afraid to even try stuff that mm-hmm. I don't under? You know, I, I guess I figure like if I don't understand it, it must be way difficult, mm-hmm. right? Well, as of yesterday, both of those books have been published through Amazon now. Okay, yeah. And I have the proofs coming right now, so I can see the hard copy. Well, pretty soon they're going to be available for purchase on Amazon. Why haven't I done that years ago, yeah, Bob? Yeah, yeah, It's crazy. That was 2018. 2018 and 2019. I put out those first two books, and I have never done this. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't know. If, I don't even know if they did it back then, Amazon self-publishing, but somebody did probably. I'm trying to think when I did mine, because what are we, in 24 already? 
Uh, it's been it's been two or three years, um, but it, and again, I'm I'm not a you know real high tech guy or anything like that. Um, but it, it they walk you through if you're interested, look at it, and you know or whatever. Uh, maybe reach out to us, we can get you started or something. But uh, I think Danny did. He kind of asked me a couple questions. I sent him some links, and and they kind of walk you through the steps. They they correct you if if something you're trying to throw something out there that doesn't fit right or something like that it kind of walks you through the steps but if you you and it's free um you, you just have to have an amazon account that's free the cool thing is there's no investment in this thing it's not like you're dropping it's money. just your time like my, my dad when he did books i remember just like the huge investment of mm-hmm. both the design and the printing because you had to have these sitting in boxes in your garage i mean we're mm-hmm. talking thousands of books at a lot of money a piece mm-hmm lot of money tied up in these things well with print on demand they order them they print one book and send it to them Mm -hmm. it's wonderful yeah yeah and you don't have to touch it yeah yeah so yeah i'm hoping a lot of more apostolics get their stuff out because it really has been well and and i i kind of i want to step back i i i'm joking about making the money my thing was was it's apostolic content. It's uh, the Jesus. It's uh, the birth of Jesus, and then Jesus, the youth. Um, you know, kind of growing up. And I think I have another story in line if I get back into doing it. And then I did a story on Noah. I did Ruth and uh, Fall of uh, Jericho, or something like that. But it's like you know what? It's just kind of an apostolic. It's just kind of like a kid's book in a, in a way. But it was like basically just uh, if you go to Danny's website on the uh, um, Apostolic Family Time Radio, um, you can download the actual uh, dramas we we drop the dra- actual dramatized versions of these and I thought you know why don't I just tweak it and put it in this and and, and I'm it's more just a give people something to read and something to do and, and it might be fun and interesting and I, and I made it like it's dirt cheap it's just whatever the cost because if you do buy the book um, it you know it's it's a few dollars um, if you want to print a copy but if you have like what is it Kindle I think is their thing if you have like their account or what, you can read them all for free I think it's set up that way so if not let me know and I'll I'll fix it but I think it's free if you have the the Amazon Kindle or whatever if you're a reader and you like to read uh, the online version it's it's absolutely free so it's I don't know we'll see but I just want to get stuff stuff out there you know to, absolutely. it's like that's why we go knocking on doors you know they don't know that we're here let's go tell them about it. So, yep. Anyway, there there is definitely not enough apostolic content out out there, which is why I'm so excited about this curriculum we're making. Um, and I'm not going to beat it to death because the last podcast was nothing but about the curriculum. So I don't I don't want to repeat that podcast, but I do want to say that this curriculum, I think, is filling a gap. And, and if I'm wrong, please tell me about this, uh, somebody. But. It's a, it's a curriculum that is apostolic to the core, and those exist. But it's also highly, highly creative, interactive, exciting, lots of object lessons, action songs. All those things are tied into it, and that exists. But nothing that does both. If it's out there, I've never found it. I've tried. I've looked for a long time. We've tried a, a lot of curriculums before we settled on what we're doing now. And none of it has, has bridged that gap of being apostolic to the core where you don't have to rewrite stuff every Sunday. And Bob, you've, you've been down that. We both have where you're writing, rewriting other people's material. And even from Pentecostal sources, sometimes you're having to rewrite it because they're referencing stuff that we don't believe in, you mm-hmm. know, uh, entertainment and stuff that we don't do. And yeah, it's yeah. troubling. So this is, this is going to fit that gap. Apostolic and incredibly creative, mm-hmm. where it's something the kids are dying to get to. They cannot wait. They're so excited about Sunday school because it was so fun last week. Mm-hmm. But when they get there, they're hearing repentance, baptism, in Jesus' name, receiving the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And, you know, that's tied into everything else that we're teaching that day. But they're never going to leave a Sunday without getting those things. So yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Um, but that's not even what we're talking about today. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, we're going to be a little bit more topical. So, uh, Bob. What what was your what are we talking about today? Well, so so as I was filling out that form um, about your the questions you asked, um, and uh, a couple of them, you know 
jumped out at me. But then on our Sunday school meeting last week, when you brought up and mentioned the correct curriculum and that you're going to be sending out the, 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 not the quiz, but the, the survey thing, um, you mentioned the one man band. How do you, how do you help a one man band? And that, that just kind of got me going. And you hadn't, and you didn't even ask me to be on a podcast yet, but that, that just jumped out of my mind. And I started thinking back. Uh, 20 something years ago when we first moved down here in 1997 and uh, when Sister Sharon Pierce was the, the Sunday school teacher, department, chairman, president, CEO. She was everything. She was the cook, probably, if they had breakfast, I don't know if they did. Um, but she did everything as far as I can remember. It's been a long time ago. But then during that first year that we were here, she asked Norma and I if we could come and help because the classroom started going. The church was small back then. Um, every I think every kid, 90 plus percent were church kids, you know, children of, of saints. Um, but then we started doing outreach and whatever. But I started thinking about that. She was the one man band back then, pretty much. You know, then we started growing. And so I started thinking, I go, well, and, and my questions and an- or answers to the, the, the survey you sent out for the curriculum, I was saying, you know, thinking about things like that. How are we going to, how can we help the, the small church and whatever? And, and I thought, well, let's talk about what we can do to inspire and to, to help, you know, um, the smaller church around. Because we got it. I get it. I say this every time. We got a, a phenomenal, when I was answering one of the questions, how many, how many people we have in your class? I was like, oh man, how many do we have? So I think I put down six, but that's just our, our, that, that probably was an underestimate, but we got other classes and I thought, well, on average, it's probably about that, I guess, with, you know, whatever so to helpers. I actually had one of our teachers text us and said, hey, I'm going through some of these responses that have come in and um, I'm seeing that, and, and if you're out there, it, anyway, I'm just, I'm just going to tell you what happened. Okay. So she said, most of these are, are showing one or two volunteers. Is that normal? She said, is what we have not normal? I said, you don't realize how hmm. blessed we are. So in our main class, in our five to nine class, we have, I counted them, nine people in there. Hmm. We have five in your, or in the 10 to 11 boys, five in 10 to 11 girls. And the youth is, is separate, but I think, you know, they have their own staff. We are so blessed. But it yeah. hadn't always been like this. You know what? And that's just in the classroom. That doesn't count. All the other people we could tap into. Hey, could you come in? All the bus riders and helpers and workers that go into church while we're having Sundays could go into the yeah. adult services. So I started thinking about that. And I'm thinking, man, you know, what can we do to help energize and, and maybe some tips for, for that, that uh, yeah. Elijah so that's all, that all said, alone? <laughs> let, all that said does give encouragement because mm-hmm. we've been there. Yeah, yeah. This has been a one man band. Exactly. And now we have we have a, a lot of help. Um, I had someone call me yesterday. I talked to them about, and I'm I'm purposely being non specific on who it is, uh, but they called and said, "Hey, if you had to start, uh, the odds of this conversation happening when you brought up that topic is unreal." He said, "If you had to start your Sunday school from scratch and you were the only person at your church, what would you do?" Mm-hmm. Because that's what he's doing. He said, I'm, I'm having to basically, I mean, he said, I'm doing my best to build what you have from scratch. Yeah. So let's talk about it. So this is kind of some of the tips I gave him, first of all, and we'll just kind of walk our way through this and we might get sidetracked along well, the way. I, I want to get sidetracked. I haven't <clears throat> read all the notes. Forgive me for not doing the pre-read. Oh, I didn't know you sent it. But w- the one thought that came to my mind, and it was, it was again, based on the survey, and you'd said something like, how long is your typical Sunday school? Okay. And you, you had increments. So you had half an hour, 45 minutes, hour, or hour and a half, or whatever. I started thinking. And I, I remember when we didn't really have a curriculum, when it was just Norma and I there, and then we split up. So I had the boys, um, I think it was like 10 to 13-year-olds or whatever, coming up with something. I was coming up with something new every week. The power hour was doing something different. So it was a lot different than what we did. And I was like, man, what am I going to teach on? And, and it was basically, I was going to lecture. Now that's me. I coming back from academia and whatever and lecture at all. But I want to tell a quick story. So I taught here about that same time, uh, the science class and the way it worked out. At the Christian school. At the Christian school. 
And uh, I were at a Monday through Thursday job and I was off on Fridays. And, and, and Brother Moore at the time asked me, hey, could you come and help teach? Or, and I go, why? Well, but I'm only available that one day. He goes, well, we'll rearrange the whole schedule so that they have that science class for like from morning till 11 or noon um, on Fridays. Then you just do it, you know, just a longer session. About um, two or three weeks into it, one of the kids, um, I won't mention the name, I don't even remember who it was. She said, are you going to do this every Friday? And I'm like, do, do what? Well, come here and, and, and talk to us. And, and, and I sat there, I'm thinking, so I'm teaching, the, it was chemistry or whatever the biology, whatever the science class was. I go, well, 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 what do you want me to do? I go, we only have, you don't have it all week long. We have it just basically on Friday to get through the stuff. So, you know, she goes, well, but it's, it's kind of long. And, and, I, I, and this girl kind of irritated me a little bit. <laughs> I said, well, I bet. You may want to edit this part. I go, oh, I, no, here it comes. Here it comes. I go, okay. I, I apologize for lying in the beginning. I, went, I just said this. I don't think it was that bad. But you judge for yourself. Give us some feedback. I said, well, I bet you can sit in front of a movie for two and a half hours and not complain. I said that. The classes went silent. And because I don't think she she wasn't a member of our church. She was just somebody that's going to the school. <laughs> so, But I, I just said, we'll go, you know, anyway, it, it went out. I wasn't even 60 then. This was 25 years ago. But I mean, you know, but I started thinking, what do you do if you're the one man show? And and I, I, I'm just going to throw this out. This may be crazy and stupid, but I wouldn't try to take if you have six, seven, eight, nine, ten year olds to do an hour less with them. I don't think you're going to get the attention span. If it's just you standing, there, you're going to have to be really creative. And I, I was thinking, you know what? Pare it down. Maybe you sp- you have fun and games, finger paint for twenty minutes or something like that. But the focus on the lesson. But then the rest of the time, if you have to just babysit or whatever, because you got to keep them there or something. I started thinking. I go, you're gonna be, you're gonna stress yourself out to try to lecture to a seven year old for forty five minutes on on this one thing and, and, and being creative every time. I think I, I was just going to say, have fun, do the game, do a song and you need to shorten it up and go out and play basketball or something. I don't, I don't know. That was just my thoughts. It's maybe Sure. Well, let's, let's talk about it. So we know in our class, we have learned that anything going long over a certain time period, the kids check out. So exactly mm-hmm. what you said, as far as like you stand up there and try to do anything, especially lecture, it's you're done. Like the kids, after a certain number of minutes, they give you a chance, and after that, they just they're done. Um, even if it's ultra creative, mm-hmm. it's hard to keep their attention for past a certain length of time. So the the rule of thumb is a minute per age. So if they're an eight year old, you got about eight minutes past that. It's time to change gears. So uh, we we break ours up into segments into pieces, and every eight minutes it switches to something else. Mm-hmm. So even if you're by yourself. Change it every eight minutes. So let's go into that by yourself thing. So I told this 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 guy I was talking to. I said, first of all, it's tough to do it by yourself. Mm-hmm. It's really tough. And in California, you shouldn't. Not just in California, yeah. anywhere. Being uh, alone with children is just a recipe for uh, getting yourself in a, in a situation that you know it, it could turn into some kid trying to get you know whatever he, you know he said she said and you have no nobody to back you up. So first of all, have somebody else over eighteen in the classroom with you. Mm-hmm. That's that's a not just a a good thing to do as far as creativity and having effective Sunday school, but just protect yourself. Why why even risk it? Mm-hmm. We yeah. don't pick up anybody in our vehicles if you're alone. Uh, we're just we're super careful because this is a litigious society and God's on our side. But man, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put myself in that position. And you know and uh, you know I was thinking about that too. And it's like, well, how do you recruit and get people? Well, one, and I I'll, I'll go back to what brother. Um, um, two things. What your dad said in a message one time. You're inviting somebody to church. You know, it's like you got to be excited and enthusiastic. You don't go. You want to go to church? Go to church? And like, what? What? Do you go to church? You know, you got to be, well, yeah, you want to go to my church? It's the, and Brother Baglin, you want to go to the great, you want to come visit the greatest place in, in all of Rialto? What's that? It's just my church and it's happened. This, whatever. You just get excited. Well, maybe you got to do that in your Sunday or in your church to try to be enthusiastic and tell them what it is. And I, and I, and I think having that, 
that's what we do on Sunday school once a year or whatever. And we, you know, and, and we're so blessed with a great pastor and bishop that are so into this and help us and support us that, that, that we're, we're just, there are people just drawing in and wanting to be a part of it. And it's, it's exciting. That's why, you know, we've yeah. grown. So we're to the point where we don't have to recruit volunteers specifically. Like we don't have to say, Hey, let's go ask them if they want to be a part. Typically, just typically, they're going to see what's happening, see the excitement, hear about the neat things, see the Sunday school in front of the church and come and say, hey, how can I be a part? Mm -hmm. And honestly, we're getting so many people that way that we don't have to go and ask specific people. I mean, look at Brother Reuben. I mean, he had a burden. He, he's like, oh, I'm thinking about driving or whatever. And look mm -hmm. at how, what's they, what they've contributed in just a short oh, time. Oh, he's phenomenal. Uh, so we just had someone recently. They're going to be starting on Sunday. And uh, they were, uh, all they did was step foot in our, our class and said, I didn't even know this was happening down here. Hmm. How can I be a part? They've only yeah. been here for a few months. They've been in church for years, but as far as part of this church, they've only been here for a short time. And they, they said, I want to be a part. So I talked to them on, uh, anyway, last service, and they're going to be starting this, this coming week. As far as like dipping their toe in it, seeing what it's all about. So what I'm saying is it develops a culture where your church has such an awareness of Sunday school that you're not having to be so we, we need help we need help we need help uh, mm -hmm. eventually you'll have you will have the help but for now i would go recruit find yeah. someone that thinks a little bit out of the box a little bit uh you know like you as far as and these this is what i would look for someone that's passionate mm -hmm. someone that has a burden for kids or can get one mm -hmm. <laughs> no we didn't all start with a burden for kids i'll be honest brother lee when i first taught sunday school i did it because someone asked me to i didn't really feel like it was uh, the ministry I was supposed to be in necessarily. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I didn't think like it was the important thing that I know it is now. I just did it because I was asked to, and it hooked me. And I think that's what happens to people. They just step foot in there, they do it for a little bit, and after a while, you can't get them out with a stick. You know, they they want to be there. Well, and you know, and and I I, li I really like the way we do it with the bite sized little segments. You know, five to eight minute long or whatever. Once they kind of dip their foot in the water a little bit, that that hey, you start them off just doing the rules and stuff. So we that's a segment we talk about the class rules, but you can work that into uh, a lesson. And uh, and it's something that's it, it doesn't take a ton of preparation. Yep. And it's not intimidating, and you're not, you know, it, it, it helps kind of get over the fe fear, and it's to help. I think it helps just develop people. And some of the people, I, I you know, I want to I want to shout out to uh, Natalia. She did such a great job. I mean, she's what eighteen now, or give or take, or, I, I guess somewhere in there. Um, but uh, she phenomenal narrator job on on the last thing. She just was. She had such confidence. Yeah, she. she I, I was really just unbelievable. Good. I'm like, did. did when does she remember Bible quiz? I guess that probably helps you. I don't, I don't have her memory anymore, but she did such a great job. She did. And I, I was like, I was like, just, wow, she did a great job. So, yeah. So this person I was, that I was talking to, <clears throat> I'm glad you said that about the, uh, shorter times being less intimidating for someone new is they said, I, I don't want to be in front of people. I said, well, first of all, there's other positions that you never have to be in front of people if you don't want to, but if you want to dip your toe in that, you'll never be alone. Mm -hmm. We'll start you off paired with somebody. You know how like Brother Reuben at first, it was like Reuben with Bob Lee would be teaching the object lesson. And together they'd work together and nobody's ever on their own where they're deer in the headlights, can't remember what to say, panic, the object lesson is forgotten and they just, you know, the whole thing falls apart and they're embarrassed and never want to come back. We don't do that. Mm -hmm. We're very careful about putting anybody in a uh, position that they're comfortable and that they work mm -hmm. their way into that. And like you said, we'll start them with something simple and gradually, you know, as, as their confidence increases and their abilities increase and their belief in themselves increase, they'll get to the point where they can do every position. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and, you know, like and with the music, go, go, go tap into somebody that's up in your choir or one of your musicians or whatever and, and see if you can get them out once in a while to play a song. It doesn't, they don't even have to play, just kind of lead a song, go, go on, you know, and I'm sure the resource. The cool thing about action songs is yeah. you don't even have to sing them. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. just and act the, them out. It, yeah. I mean, you literally play it. It has the words and everything. You yeah. just play it and you just learn the actions and mm -hmm. learn them well because you, that, that you will feel a little foolish if you don't even know the actions that you're supposed to be teaching the kids. So you got to know those. Um, but you don't have to be able to sing. Yeah, yeah. But matter. that's a that's a good thing to recruit somebody that that might really like music and 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 you know again just to kind of get their foot in the door, you know. 
Absolutely. So I would recommend at least two people. So yeah. you can do it by yourself, but it won't be fun. <laughs> you get a second person, and because we do that building block, that segment thing where this piece is followed by this piece, and we'll go into what those pieces are, but while you're teaching, that person that's helping you can be preparing for theirs. And then while they're doing their piece, you can be preparing for your next one, and you can kind of go back and forth, and it really makes it so much better. It's just uh, you are... Uh, you're not as stressed. Mm -hmm. You don't have to, you plan for half as much yeah. and you just feel so much more confident walking into something that you just spent the, uh, you know, a couple minutes before, like literally while they're doing their piece, you can have it all assembled and ready to roll. Uh, instead of, you know, leaving one piece yourself and walking into the next. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if that made sense, but yep, yep. okay. Um, so you got to have somebody helping you and you got to determine what you're teaching every week, mm -hmm. which leads us to curriculum. Are you going to use it? Yeah. We haven't found something that fits, so we've been writing our own. We've been determining the topic for the next several years, and we'll talk about that in a sec. Then we've been breaking it into pieces, and each teacher decides how they're going to teach their own piece. If you're doing all that yourselves, that's a challenge. You know, Instead of preparing for eight minutes like our teachers have to, you now have to do a full hour in eight. You know, So you're doing nine different pieces by yourself. Mm -hmm. that's, that's tough. Um, so are you going to use a curriculum? If you are, um, that, that's helpful. And we're, our curriculum hopefully will be ready by the end of the year. If not, at least make a spreadsheet determining what you're going to teach for the entire year. Mm -hmm. Meaning don't wing it. Don't just show up or not just show up, but don't just decide, you know what, this year or this week I think I'll teach on holiness. That's, that's a good topic. And it is. Mm -hmm. And it can't be skipped. But if you're winging it every Sunday, you have no intention, or it's not intentional, it's not deliberate, there might be things falling through the cracks, you might teach the same thing twice in, in just a short time and not even know it. Yeah. Uh, so just be very deliberate. We have a, a spreadsheet that has a list of all the topics that we're going to teach for the next three years. So we know, you know a year out what we're going to be teaching. And it's a rotation. So at the end of three years, we're going back to year one. Yeah. <laughs> and the same way with the curriculum as well, that's what we're doing. Um, so we know with, and we've shown this to pastor and worked with him. So he, if there's anything he feels we're missing, we'll put it in. Yeah. So it's a very uh, deliberate choice of topics. You know, it, it's funny back when, back in the day, like we had that Pentecostal publishing, we'd get those big, huge envelope the things flame and stuff. Yeah. yeah and, and, uh, um, but, uh, it, 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 and that was off and on. We didn't have every year we taught, but it was most of the time it was just coming up. What am I going to teach this week? And I, I got to tell you, just having that spreadsheet with the topics is knowing ahead of time. I mean, you guys put it out, you and Bree, whoever else, uh, you know, put put the stuff out. And Believe it or not, it. it was Michael Barrier. Okay. Myself and Pastor put that together. Okay. Yeah, long I'm, time ago. I'm telling you, and I'm sure that people are welcome to it if they need something. But it's 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 amazing how. I don't care how long you've been in church. You sit there and like, man, what can I teach on next week? It's like, the, oh, Bible has nothing to teach on. Like, are you kidding me? But when you, when you see the three years worth of topics and it flows, so, you know, like we repentance, baptism, the Holy Ghost. And then, you know, we have series in, in there for different things like godly characteristics or whatever it is. But it's like, wow, when it's all laid out, it's like, it, it, I'm telling you, the burden that's relieved just by seeing that and, and you have you know what you're shooting for next week or whatever, I'm telling you that that is a is a as a it's a it's a it's weird. It's like wow, it's amazing. Why didn't we think about this twenty five years ago? Yeah, it really has helped a lot. Um and then not only do we have a topic, now we gotta break that single topic for this particular week. You know, we got three years you know, that's what, 150 or 52 times three, we got uh, whatever, 156 topics. But this Sunday, that one topic has to be split into, for us, eight minute segments. Now, we were teaching five to nine year olds now, so the target, the middle target on that is actually seven. So we lowered our, I don't know if you noticed, our segments are now seven minutes long. Yeah. yeah. So we lowered them just by one minute because we're shooting for that middle. Five year old is maybe, we might lose them a little bit at the end of some of the longer segments. And some of the, you know, like the nine year olds might, might be able to stick it out a little bit longer, but we're shooting for that middle ground. That's all you know. That's all we can do with a wide age range. So um, we're we're going to split it up into a cohesive, hopefully, list of what we call building blocks, mm -hmm. and let's go through those. So we're going to give you a list of these building blocks, but these are not all in one Sunday. These are spread maybe through a couple of Sundays. So like we'll have the pre 
class dead air filler. Bob, you do that a lot because you're not currently on a bus right now. So unfortunately, it does fall on you pretty heavy because uh, we're driving or something. Yeah. But that pre-class dead air filler is if uh, as the buses are trickling in, kids are getting off, uh, parents are dropping off their children, they're starting to move into that area from 930 to 10. There's like this 30 minute window where we're not teaching, but we sure don't want the kids doing whatever they want to do. Yeah. And so we're, it's not super spiritual what we're doing at that time. So what what do yeah. you what have you been doing the last couple of Sundays? Uh, so we'll typically do stuff like I, I think Kim helped out last time was uh, she was she was there uh, with prayer request cards and and it's people coming in. Hey, you got a prayer request? Did you need and helping them fill that out? If they needed that. I just came up with a game. Uh, I just we we we, we, we do the uh, the bucket stack. We got the big colored buckets. We do that. It was the variation on the cup stacking challenge type thing. The kids love that game, and I don't think it ever grows old. There's some that just really love to play that. We could do that almost all the time. But this week I took uh, some ping pong balls, and I took every color of bucket, and I put the green bucket of goodness in the middle, and I just put the other buckets around. And they're just various types of, of sand. You don't want to land in one of those. And just to- toss the ping pong ball and try to make it in the bucket just to kind of make up games. But there's so many. You can go on different things a game. Uh, that, that goofy little box game that we did, one pre-class filler, where I, I, I just – had something come in a box and it was just like a four inch uh, uh, high and it was about 18 inches square box and I just poked a hole in the middle of it and uh, and I had some marbles and just roll the marbles, try to get it in the hole. And I'm telling you, kids love that game. You know, my wife keeps it in her classroom and they, they play it in the classroom now. And it's just, it just costs nothing. You know, it was just a marble and a, and a box that I got probably from Amazon or something. I don't know. But uh, um, or or Walmart Plus, if you haven't had Walmart Plus, please check it out. Um, but anyway, you work uh, to Walmart. <laughs> so um, but anyway, uh, just so it's games. It's just somehow just get them to do something. Or maybe jokes, you know, some you'll tell like goofy dad jokes or something like that, um, or whatever, just anything, just different. really good but, dad jokes. Yeah, is what very good. That's what I meant. Of course. And uh, but so anyway, just anything so to just fill games. the time where a kid can come in and out, or can come in in the middle of it and not feel like paper they airplane something. contest. Just just you we've know, done just everything. just whatever. Yep. The giant connect four. We've yep, done yep. Uh, anyway action songs. Even we've done a lot yep, of yep, action yep. songs as, in, as filler. Then we go into the creative intro, which is where we introduce the topic. We're not going to break all these down that long. Uh, we're introducing the topic. We have our weekly challenge where we have a social media uh, challenge put out for the kids during the week, and whoever has answered the challenge, and we know ahead of time before class starts uh, if they've done it or not because they have to text us and let us know. Uh, then we have our super kid of the week, but it's the castle, so we're super squire. And by the way, I customed our custom our certificate, so it says super squire, not okay. super student. Okay. Uh, we have our birthdays. We have our rules or ways to have fun in super class. We have our apostolic chant, our books of the Bible song, action songs, old apostolic song, prayer requests and offering, mini object lesson, word shot, good behavior incentive game, Bible story, game or giveaway that teaches, puppet show or skit, creative memory verse, and final lesson. Now that's a lot to cram into Sunday, so we don't try. We have a three hour Sunday school <laughs> for these kids. And we have, <laughs> yeah, we're done by Thursday, usually. <laughs> But the idea is that it's never repeated. Right. So every Sunday is a different set of these. Now, there's some that are not optional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That uh, plan of salvation part is never left out. The apostolic channel, it's in there every single Sunday, no matter what. We have our final lesson, no matter what. We're going to have an action song, no matter what. I'm sorry, what were you saying? I was just going to say, but even those, we have it every week. And I I think it was Brother Mullen. Pa has a book out called Teaching with Variety. Even those things, we still might mix it up a little bit. We'll have the kids shout out boys versus girls. Oh, or whatever. a lot, so, a lot so of So we it. have var- each of these things, even though yeah. we do it each week, we still try to vary that up so it doesn't get old or, or routine. Yeah, so like the final lesson isn't someone going up there and just talking for eight minutes. It's Sometimes it's a skit. Sometimes that final lesson consists of a puppet show. Sometimes it's an object lesson. Many times it is. Uh, it, it's always different. And these things, except for certain ones, like the creative intro is always going to be at the beginning and the final lessons at yeah, the yeah. end. Everything else in the middle is going to get scrambled as far as the order. So it's not going to be in the same order every time. Um, the idea is that every time a kid comes, it's a different experience. Mm-hmm. Where they're engaged, they're not yawning their way through it. Oh, here comes the song. At least I, don't, I hope not. I don't want them to be able to predict what's happening and when. 
Um, and so with that schedule, we try to do it up to four weeks out. <coughs> I'm not yep. Yep. there right now, <laughs> but uh, that's what I try to do. Try to plan it up to four weeks out. That way, Brother Lee, you can look out yep. Yep. three weeks ahead and say, hey, it looks like I'm doing the final lesson on this subject. I'm going to start preparing now. Um, I already said this, but every Sunday is different than the last. Um, and like I said before, hopefully you're not the one doing everything. Yeah. In our class, we are lucky enough now with, with our class now, because we did split out a bunch of teachers into those other two classes, we're doing a couple things. Like I think I'm, this week I'm doing the rules and super squire plus prayer and offering. Mm-hmm. So I'm doing a couple things. But most for the most part, if it's like a heavy duty segment, like final lesson, you're not going to be doing anything else. I'm going to let you concentrate on that. But the the nice thing about having all of those shorter little segments and doing them, they're, they're uh, once you kind of get used to doing a little bit and whatever, um, it's it, it doesn't seem like it's overwhelming because if you look at each one as just a you know a short few minute deal, it, you don't I don't think you you again because I think people think oh, I got an hour. Well, no, don't forget forget the hour. You got five minutes for, for the song, five minutes for this super squire of the monk, make it exciting. You're giving out some candies, your award, whatever. And, and I think it just kind of kind of like gives you a little, you know, sense of break or something that you're not yep. stressed, you know, a stress relief. It's like, you know, oh, I can do that, you know, and, you know, I don't know. Anyone can plan for a week. For eight minutes, yeah, yeah, that's not that long. In, in our case, and even even now. if you're the, you only got two or three people, and you're doing all of them, it's still you break it up. They're, they're you know, it's doable when you have it laid out. Especially, I think have, again, going back to having the topic, and we try to relate. I think you may have said, sorry for being redundant, is we try to make each one of those fit the topic somehow. You know, whatever it is, we try to. Yeah, know, I, it, you know, maybe, I don't know that we said that specifically. I, I assumed it was a given, but let's make sure. Yeah. So those segments that we're talking about all teach that topic. So like this coming up week, we are talking about, uh, oh, my brain turned off, brother. Uh, we're talking about, um, what are we talking about? Holiness? I think it's holiness. No. Is it holiness? Is it? Yeah, uh, having your own personal walk That's with right. God. Having your own walk with God. You can't get on the coattails of your parents. So having your own walk with God. Every single segment must teach that topic. If you have the creative intro, it must teach on having your own walk with God. The song needs to talk about that. The uh, game, if you're doing a game, it has to talk about having your own walk with God. And some of these topics are easier to tie in than others. Mm -hmm. That one, I can see having your own walk with God. Man, we can make a game about, you know, having a kid walk and, you know, Mm -hmm. we, we could have, I don't know, carrying books on their head or something. I don't know. We could figure it out. Um, but everything goes back to the topic. Everything. Everything yep, yep. teaches. Everything teaches. Nothing is a buy because we only have an hour. And it feels like it's 20 minutes sometimes. It feels like it's so short. I hope it feels that way to the kids too. And, you know, I, I, the key thing I think is, is uh, again, show the excitement and enthusiasm. Make your little segment fun. And if, if you're doing something that doesn't quite fit in, make it exciting and then it just make it make a joke out of it. Say, now that really goes with the topic. The, oh, what was the topic? Oh, I messed up. Okay, next week I'll do better. Whatever. As long as it's exciting for that time, you, you know, it, it, it's going to be fun. It's going to work out. Kids are forgiving. You know, it just yeah. make it fun. All right. And the, the last thing I want to really hit hard is you don't need to spend a lot of money to have good Sunday school. Um, this goes back to, I actually remember when we sat down after that fishing trip and sat in the galley and wrote down all the lessons that we learned from fishing that day. Oh, you remember that? (laughs) Yeah. Well, I actually wrote an article for together magazine based off that conversation Hmm. and we put it into our, uh, uh, anyway, into into an article. But one of those things was about having expensive gear doesn't make you a better fisherman necessarily. Mm -hmm. You know, having decent equipment helps. But there's a certain point where it's a law of diminishing returns, right? That guy with a thousand dollar electric reel didn't get diddly score. He never, I don't think he ever got the thing to work, did he? I don't think so. He couldn't even get it hooked up to the battery. It was a joke. Um, my point is that you don't have to have, you know, the best decorations. You can go to Dollar Tree, yeah. Walmart, and, and and come up with some really good, uh, effective uh, decor and teaching. And as you work your way through this thing, you're going to build. A closet of resources. Oh, yeah. You know, so if I'm teaching this lesson, I'm going to go buy the whatever I need just for that lesson. I'm not going to buy a whole 
science lab just because we're doing a bunch of science experiments. I'm just going to buy what I need. Yeah. And over time, you're going to start building up a collection. You're surrounded right now, brotherly, we are, yeah. by a <laughs> ton of stuff that we've collected over the years. Yeah, yeah. And it was done one little thing at a time. Yeah. And so you'll have the same thing. So Walmart, Dollar Tree gets you a bunch of it, and Amazon will have most, uh, of course, Walmart Plus. Walmart Plus. <laughs> will have everything Amazon has and more. And, and actually, you, you can actually, if you don't like something, return it. You can just stick it on your porch, and they'll come and pick it up, too. You don't even have to go take it somewhere to get it packaged up. So Walmart Plus. I did not know yes, that. You, yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can do that. So, anyway. Oh, my goodness. So let's just go back to Let's just do a quick recap. Tips for a one-man band. Bob, if we had to start over today, if we, God help us, every, we lost every person helping us that we had, all of the resources that we had, we had to start over. If we had to go to a daughter work and start over, what would we do? First of all, I would try to find you or someone, <laughs> and I wouldn't be alone. So try to get at least one person to help you. You, you got to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, and you, obviously, you're praying about it. And... Uh, utilize the resources that are out there we're we're here to help go and and uh I, I i don't know one of the comments i think i put in the questionnaire thing was having uh, links to uh maybe some videos on how because we did all the object lessons on how to do things stuff like that as much as you can i don't know it's what's all going to be in there yeah, yeah. so and, if um, it's an object lesson that we have a video for it's going to be a qr code you scan it, it's going to take you there but, yep. but it, you know, you are going to have to put in some time, but, you know, talk to your pastor, your church, and just, I, I, there, there are people out there that, you know, like, I, I don't know who it was you were talking to, said, oh, I didn't know this, we even really did this over here, you know, somebody that's fairly new, um, but but see what's out there, and see what people want to help, because having another body there, I think that would be one of the first things I would do, is try to get a, at least a few people to that um hey come come and check this out you know and and let's and uh, again start with that agenda or your little uh the outline of what you're going to do that day look the spreadsheet the topic break it out into you know a few uh minute segments and, and just start, start start small don't 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 try to you know eat the whole elephant in, in one meal just uh Absolutely. you know eat d take a little bit and if you have to spend more time and just you know playing games or and, and at the end get that little bit in there and just kind of maybe expand from there you know okay. and, uh, on the time frame and, and how much time you spend on the different things or whatever but yeah. don't don't lose hope um and uh you can do it because we again we, we were there and uh i don't i don't sharon was probably more exciting i think when they went to <laughs> my class was probably boring because i think i just lectured i i didn't do i don't do songs now once in a while they'll throw me in that and i'll you know, and I'll, you do I'll, very good with I'll, it. I'll, I'll, I'll get somebody, I'll get Eric to Toronto or, or uh, Sarah or somebody to come out and help me, and I just kind of fumble along with them. But, um, but, uh, but those are those are things that I, I don't want to say they're easy because they're good at it, and I'm not. So it's not easy, or I'd be better at it, I think. Um, but there, there, there's stuff that doesn't. Other than working the song with the thought or with the with the theme or whatever you have in, trying to find some, but you just gotta you gotta research, you know, go to you know Brother Google and check it out and and but our or, or the curriculum, it's gonna be there. It's gonna be exciting once this does come out. Yeah, so you gotta have someone to help you determine what you're teaching for the entire year, at least one year, preferably three. Then break down each Sunday into intentional, deliberate schedules where it's it's manageable, like you said, bite sized chunks. Build your schedule out of those and delegate those pieces to the yeah. volunteers that you have. Hopefully, you're not delegating everyone to you because yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're the only person there. <clears throat> At least every other one. And, and again, you're gonna, you're gonna. Um, I mean, I, I, it, obviously, you know. I mean, uh, it, just like anything, if you're a manager at work and you have people reporting to you, or whatever, you you have a group of people you know you can count on are going to be there and be fa uh, one of the things. I somebody asked me the other day, what do you look for in people or leadership or whatever i go well i know one thing i look for if people work for me is someone that's faithful someone that's going to be there all the time and just show up and clock and they may not be the brightest or the fastest worker or whatever depending on what's going on or where i work um but somebody that's 
I'm not having to scramble to try to get a body to fill this spot. And so that was one of the worst things I hated, not having somebody there and having other departments count on somebody. So just having somebody be there that's faithful, even just having a body in the class that they maybe they don't, they don't feel comfortable teaching or whatever. Again, give them those little things. And you, but you got you to start the succession planning. You got to start grooming you know, people uh, to, to take over things cause you, you're, or you're going to get stuck. You got you to gotta, you know, obviously get your pastor, however you work it out you know, with people that you trust and there's all the, the what do we what are the fingerprinted fbi background checks that that yeah. i can't believe i passed and, and i'm just kidding just kidding <laughs> but uh i had a two this year i had one for school when i was teaching and then this one good not too many months apart but anyway um but yeah you, you got to get help you got to get help you know yep I don't know. and uh, you don't need to spend a lot of resources purchase yeah. the things you need as you need them uh don't go ahead don't buy a whole puppet uh, you don't spend two thousand dollars on puppets and a stage and stuff. Just go hang a curtain on a pole, and make a sock puppet if you have to. Yep. Yep. And um, the last thing, and the most not not the well for me it is the most important thing, is develop a culture of getting the kids to pray every Sunday. Um, it's easy to skip that step, but. For for a, a while in our Sunday school, Brother Lee, you, you know it wasn't common practice to have kids pray at the end of, of mm-hmm. at the end of uh, class. Not that we didn't want it to happen. It was just like, how do we even do that? How do you set an atmosphere for it? Well, now if we don't have an altar call with kids praying, it's a it's a weird day. Yeah, like yeah. it's a very strange mm-hmm. Sunday if we don't have kids praying in the altar. And uh, that's that's the same in our ten to eleven boys and girls class. There's only you know fifteen twenty kids in those. And every Sunday they're having the kids pray the same thing because there's a culture developed. And so reach for that yeah. every Sunday. Even if you don't call it an altar call. Like in our curriculum we're writing, we're not calling it altar call. We're calling it the response to the lesson prayer yeah. where okay. kids have a chance to respond. If you don't give them a chance to respond, how are they going to put into practice all the things we're teaching them? You know, one thing, uh, the, uh, music can play music and i think uh did uh no i think i was listening to brother mayo was teaching on something about music or something but anyway it's amazing what what mood music and and having you know something you know so key in music you have fun upbeat stuff during the games if in the background or whatever but then that's kind of softer more praise worship full type stuff uh at the end i think it really helps kind of usher in that that presence or something it, it does for sure that why do you think a, pa- a preacher every time has someone come into the music come, before yeah, altar yeah, call yeah. it's because it sets the mood and music is powerful it's spiritual mm-hmm. and for us not to take advantage of that in sunday school is crazy yeah yeah so yeah but it we, is i you know we, you do look back, we definitely every we do have we've had some pretty good um altar calls i guess yeah we have we have kids <laughs> get the holy ghost response times. not every sunday mm-hmm. but when it happens it's not like oh my word i can't believe that happened it, mm-hmm. it happens with with regularity we're yeah. used to it yeah, uh, because we have made it, and again, I go back to this word, intentional. We have, we have made it our purpose that we are going to have an altar call every mm-hmm. Sunday. Yeah. If one kid prays, that's okay. Yeah. And then now it's, it's a uh, where uh, and that, they and don't that, pray. You know, and, and you definitely, that's where you do need to have a few people because we want to get out. There's, there's obviously going to be a group of kids. I mean, I, I want to get done with the lesson and run to the playground, you know, myself sometimes, but, uh, you do need people to, uh, to, uh, you know, uh, to, to help take those kids away so they don't distract from the people. Cause we'll, we'll have a number of people. And we, and fortunately we have enough, uh, teachers praying with the kids and, and we'll go around. But I, I, you know, I look at, I take a lot of pictures of our Sunday school and I'll stand back on our little platform and, and look at how many kids and stuff are praying and the teachers praying with them and whatever their bus kids or whatever. A lot of times our bus workers will come back and they'll be in there at the end. Um, but you do want to get, to separate the kids, you know, uh, the want to go eat or, you know, snacks and, and go play from the ones that are sitting there listening to music and, and or, or praying or something, whatever. So Absolutely. So that's just some ideas. So if you are a one man band or if you're a team of, of, of 100, you know, there are uh, you can still have effective Sunday school despite the scale. You can you can make it happen. And I promise you this, if you keep going, uh, if you keep down that path of, of you may be a one-man band, but it's not always going to be like that. Right. 
if you keep pushing forward and you keep trying and striving for excellence every single Sunday, people, other people are going to catch the vision yeah. and it's going to explode. It will. I you think a lot quit. of it's just your own growth and getting excited. I, I mean, we have the, the, the um, children's conference down here and, and I was looking at one of the chats, some, some other, we're not the only ones that have it. Other places are having those things. Try to go to those things if you can. Um, Absolutely. And, uh, but just, again, I think look at, look at everything we're doing. And, and We have one April 26th and 27th, and I'm not sure if the one the, the Breedens are doing, if it just happened or is going to happen. I, I don't know, but uh, I'm excited that they're doing those. We need more of those apostolic children's conferences all across the United States so people can, more than that, everywhere. Because if so you can just go learn. to one of those and just kind of yep. watch somebody do something, I think that helps too. Because you may be sitting here listening to this, or you know, but I think going and seeing something, if you can afford it and, and make the time to get there, I think that's going to really help. Absolutely. So. Well, uh, I think we have, what is, man, has it been over an hour? It has. Well, thank you for coming, Brother Lee. Everybody out there, if you have any ideas on what we can talk about next time, send an email to info at apostolicsundayschool.com. Uh, go to apostolicsundayschool.com slash APN if you want to see other podcasts that do uh, talk about the same subject or other subjects, but they're all apostolic-based that are on that list. Anyway, we'll see you guys all later. God bless. We'll That's see you next time. And I think I hit the wrong button. 